youth, society, culture, Christianity, keywords that we refer to when we talk about our Syriac youth in the American society. Parents came from the Middle East and emerged in this society for the sake of having better future for their kids. Where all have achieved this goal? If so, what was their challenges, sufferings? How was the church dealing with its youth congregation? And what extra efforts has been done to embrace them? I believe that one of the biggest challenges as uh, Christian youth is being able to stand up for what you believe in and being able to to actually show people that you believe in God and that and that you have to act a certain way um, in order to please God and and to make your life as good as it should be. So usually what people do is they end up following what their friends do and and uh, they they have trouble staying in line with God because they don't want to show people how how it is because they're afraid of getting made fun of and they're afraid of being different. Everybody wants to be the same. Everybody, no one wants to be unique and people are just afraid of persecution from their friends and everyone wants friends and you're not, when you're at school, you don't really have many of your church friends to help back you up and, and to help you to realize that, okay, God is amazing. You just, you're surrounded by all these people who are very secular and don't really believe in God, so you decide to act a certain way so you can fit in with them. First of all, what are the challenges that our youth face in this society? Today's society, we have people um, on earth thinking that, um, you know, that whatever they do in their lives as good deeds to, the, to others, or to benefit society, that that's enough for them and that that's enough for God. When the Bible tells us that you must honor God and you must you preach His Word because that's our purpose in life, He gave us life so that we may be able to teach others about Him and to encourage them to have that close relationship with the Lord. And uh, unfortunately, though the earthly standards are um, to mostly live our lives for ourselves and to live in the flesh, um, but the Bible tells us to repent and to um, to live more uh, like the Spirit, to um, portray the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, and to grow uh, in spirituality every day, um, so that we may be able to know God more and to be able to teach others about Him, so that they may be able, may be able to experience Him in their lives as well, in all of His goodness. What are some of the ways to honor God in order for Him to glorify in our lives? Uh, okay, so uh, ways that you honor God is uh, having faith and uh, knowing that He's there with all your heart, even though that uh, you, should, you, do, you shouldn't have to have any physical proof, you should just believe in your heart that He is there. Uh, ways where it's difficult to honor God is pretty much just um, getting distracted by everything around us in this world, like generally electronics and school work. Um, <laughs> What is that? Dis distractions. Um, it takes us away from what we're actually trying to do with life and what we're trying to develop with our relationship with. And not to be distracted while we're going to church and stuff. So, because when we're in church, we get distracted from our cell phones all the time. We get, like, we want to get out of church sometimes. So, sometimes we should just go early instead and just focus on the mass and what, like, everyone is telling us and preaching us. We honor God by reading the Bible, going to Sunday school, and uh, Bible study. How do you honor God? So, ways you can honor God is you pray to God willingly. You do it willingly. You think of God willingly and all the great things He's done for you. Why the youth in general doesn't like to attend the Sunday Mass? Um, sometimes the youth might feel a little challenged coming to the maybe Sunday services at church uh, because there might be uh, difficulty in understanding the traditions, there could be, um, the language could be a barrier for them. Um, it might be irrelevant to the culture that they are living in at the moment. It's very different. There, there could be a lot of old elements 
Um, however, that does not change the meaning of the actual service. And I think with better um, education or if we explain the elements involved, um, if we can try to maybe try to change the language or help them a little understand things a little better, uh, that might encourage them to come and to um, focus on the meanings um, and that might help them to grow and we can we can ensure that our future generations will be able to attend the service and enjoy it, learn from it and grow spiritually. What are some of our youth solutions toward these challenges? Well, one thing you have to realize in order to maintain your faith in public is that you should not be afraid, that you should realize that God is there for you and that, that especially within our community, we have people there for you and we have, we have a lot of people that care about us that even if you lose your school friends, that you still have people in the church, that you still have your family. I mean, friends will always come and go, but it's your family that stays there for you and that God is always there for you. So it's important that you realize that he will he will always be there for you and and one important thing you have to do is to to stay close with God through prayer and through reading the Bible through going to church every day because those are what help you to be able to stand up and and to to not be afraid because you experience the love of God and it's a love that you want to show to everybody and something you will not be afraid to show everybody how can any pastor speak to our youth in this society? Dealing with the youth uh, is a big challenge, especially to us as uh, we grew up in a different society and uh, have a different culture. And we have to raise uh, youth who grew up in a different society with different challenges in their life. There is a kind of a gap between me as a priest coming from Lebanon originally and came to Canada at the age of 24. I have to admit that they didn't have the experience that the youth had in their childhood as a Canadian youth or at high schools and so forth. So uh, there would be always a gap. However, there are many ways to reach and outreach to the youth. Um, first of all, there is uh, the word and the preaching or teaching. It has always to be something that would uh, be of their interest, like the topics that we have to choose. And uh, following a tradition, we have a, a church cycle that forces us usually to speak about the same subject every year in the same time. Yet uh, we have to choose out of that and out of certain Sundays different topics that would relate more to the youth life. And uh, especially in youth retreats and youth Bible studies we have this opportunity to relate to the youth and talking about, for example, marriage, sexuality, self-control, uh, obedience, uh, God's existence, science and faith, and uh, so many related topics. Of course, it depends on the qualifications of the speaker. At the same time, in the way we address the youth, how applicable are we? At the same time, every speaker has his own uh, gift uh, to relate to people, what we call usually charisma. It's the gift that you can attract people to your speech. This all has an impact to attract the youth to listen to you. Yet this is only the ministry of the word. There are other ways, of course, absolutely, that can relate to the youth and deal with their issues or bring them to the church. We know that we have a history and a tradition that has taken a, a certain form throughout centuries and is almost uh, over 1600 years old. Uh, most of it. And uh, it is not as attract attractive to the youth actually to recite the same tradition literally. We're trying now to engage some modern English Christian songs within the liturgy, liturgy that do not contradict with the setting of the Mass itself. Uh, and at the same time, do our best uh, in using more English than Syriani so we can uh, attract the youth or make them feel that they can relate and understand. And not only that, but also we're aiming to have the youth participating in, in certain parts of the Mass so they feel as participants rather than audience or people who are just attending the Mass. 
so it's many challenges and uh, I don't think we can cover up all the challenges now yet with prayers and with the assistance of parents and families with the love and faith of the youth themselves I know that God will do a miraculous work Does San Barsoma Church doing its duty toward its youth? I do believe the church cares very greatly for our youth. Um, if it weren't for this church, I believe a lot of us would be in a lot worse situations, I myself included. Uh, I do believe that the fact that we see this and that we have them love us so much, it just kind of makes us realize that this is our true home and and it's very good and we have a lot of great activities the retreats are amazing but one thing I would like to add is that we should have more events we should have whether or not they're spiritual as long as they're social to bring the church kids together because it's really important that we have this community because when when all else fails this is the community we should be coming back to this is the one that will help us to to continue on with our lives and and to really be closer with God because we all believe in the same thing. San Barsomo Church Youth Retreat is one of the Syriac Orthodox Church activities in Canada. It's an annual youth gathering to let its youth getting together. But was it only about getting together? Uh, I love meeting new people. Um, when you go to a youth retreat, you really learn a lot about God. And um, this youth retreat was about honoring God. And that I really loved that. And um, I, really, I really got something out of the retreat. And every year I go, and it really helps me. The youth participation this year was amazing. We had a lot of um, newcomers generation, the, uh, younger, the younger kids, as you can say. Um, they were really happy to come and they were really encouraged to like, join the retreat. And um, we had the older youth, the older youth that in the retreat, they were um, participating in all of the workshop, all of the worships. And um, when the younger kids were, were seeing the older participating, they were really encouraged to stay and sing the hymns and pray from their heart. And they learned a lot from the older generation. Uh, the most thing I enjoyed at the retreat was the testimonies, um, the workshop, and the praise and worships. Um, in the youth retreat, uh, we were talking about the story when Jesus calmed the storm with his hand uh, on the boat. And I got a different meaning from that. And it's like, the boat is your life. And then you have to welcome Jesus in your, in, in your life, which is the boat. And you have to ask him to calm the storms in your life. Face your challenges. Let him be your guide. What about some youth testimonials during the recent retreat? That's one second your life is taken away from you. You don't have the opportunity to say good, goodbye to your loved ones. You don't have the opportunity to get to know God. And you don't have the opportunity to give your life to God, you know? And he goes with cancer, you slowly, you, you know, you still have that hope inside of you, but you slowly start to realize that, you know, you can't count on medicine, you can't count on your kids, you can't count on anyone. All you can count on is God. And God is the only one who can save you from the pain that you're in, you know? But always know, over that cloud that's over you, there's a sunshine behind that cloud. And always know that God is not going to stop. You know, a lot of times we pray and we try to read God's Word and we come to church and we come to retreats and, you know, we feel on fire. And then when we go home, you know, there's a sunshine and there's a cloud, but we don't decide to walk away from the cloud. We just stay there. Guys, we need to walk away from this cloud that's over us. We need to continue reading God's Word and we need to continue praying. Uh, the testimonials by the youth uh, was also very, very inspiring because um, they were, they came from different angles. Uh, they were very truthful, very deep. Uh, and to see people at such a young age uh, experience God uh, and His works um, keeps us refreshed in the church. Uh, to know that the next generation 
will have great future and they're going to be a great influence on the church. What the youth felt before and after the retreat? I felt something different in this retreat. Um, the, it was a huge blessing for me. It was really a huge blessing for me and especially from maybe the message of the retreat, it was I will honor those who honor me. For me personally, it touched me from inside because and it, it did make me think about ways how to honor God more, how to make uh, how to show his word through me more, especially uh, as like spreading his word uh, maybe as a youth leader or anything. Um, it touched me from inside um, because it increases my um, faith. It made me understand my relationship with my Heavenly Father. It made me um, think about the responsibilities that I have toward this word, toward this um, how to show my his words through me. Um, after this retreat, my experience uh, after coming back and, and witnessing um, the, the youth and how they interacted with each other and how their hearts were lifted up to the Lord and it just, I felt that by seeing that the youth were, ab were able to, to lift up their hearts more, that it lifted up my heart even more and to work um, to increase my faith in, in the Lord in every day of my life and to, to see how that I can do that in my everyday life and how to to speak the word of God not to others but to just live out his word and you know but day by day how to increase my faith and strengthen my relationship with God these were things that I I'm you know starting to work on more after going to this retreat and um, learning how to honor the Lord in, in every way of my life these are things that I have experienced after this retreat. Sometimes you just need to get back with God. You need to remember that He's always with you. And retreat uh, really helps you to remember that God's always with you and you should get back to God. And like before the retreat, I was really, I wasn't really like praying or reading the Bible or anything. But then I went to the retreat and like it showed me that God is really on my side and He could strengthen me and I should honor Him more and I should read the Bible and pray and it really helped me a lot. Um, what I felt before the retreat is I felt like it was a time to get away from my stress, like a stressful life in education and school and it was like a good thing for the youth to partake, youth partake in it because there's some students that are busy with education and it's a good time to bring the students together and I felt very happy to reconnect with people that I don't regularly see and after the retreat I felt so blessed and um, very happy that I got closer to God and it was a time to be closer to Him and know Him better. How was the retreat of this year? Um, the youth retreat um, was a great success this year. The youth was very inspiring for me because they are the new fresh face of the church and to see them um, come and approach God so eagerly and have so much passion uh, sets an example even for us as leaders and reminds us of what it's like to be when you first accept the Lord um, with all the eagerness and all the energy. So that was very inspiring for me. This year's retreat was actually a very amazing retreat. It was good. Everybody who went really did care about it and they really wanted to go. The, you could tell that the youth leaders really tried to make it something special and they, they wanted to make it as excellent as possible and it was amazing. Um, one thing I would like is uh, if we could have more from Abuna. Uh, I, he's a very busy man, so it's very hard to get that. But um, uh, 
a lot more workshops as well would be very nice. I mean, we did come to the retreat to to be spiritually blessed. It's not just a social gathering. I know a lot of people did go because it is a so because they think it is a social gathering, but it is something where we're supposed to get closer with God and we're really supposed to be touched and come back a new changed person. So other than that, it was an amazing experience and I could not have been happier with the retreat. I can't wait for the summer one. My impression of this retreat was that it was a great success and um, what makes it different from other retreats was that the, the younger generation uh, were very enthusiastic. They were very in, uh, happy to be there and it was very nice to see that they were um, not holding back and that they were very active in the participation of the workshops and the praise and worship. They were very connected with God and it was just a blessing for all of us as um, older youth to see this because we have seen others in other retreats not so um, not so involved as the ones that were at this retreat. Um, I really enjoyed everybody's attention to the testimonies that were given at the retreat. They've, people were very inspired to learn how they can take their faith in God and their struggles in life and to put into action to trust the Lord. And it was a great thing to see how people were responding to the testimonies and just the, the happiness in their faces when they were listening was, was truly amazing. I was expecting the youth to come to, to the retreat just to come to have fun, to meet new people and just and to participate in a normal youth retreat. But what I did see, it was, it was more, it was more intense. There were like connection with God. We were, they were praying from their heart. They were like, in the, especially in the praise and worship, they were like praying and they were, they wanted to be there. They wanted to, to, to be with God. And I liked that, the fact that there were a lot of people, it was their first retreat and they really participated in every single way they can. Even though they, we didn't have a lot of outdoor activities like the summer retreat, but they did enjoy participating, especially in workshops and, and prayers and everything. One more thing that I'm hoping to see in the next youth retreats is to see more people. That's the only thing because it was perfect and I want to see more youth and I, I believe that we're going to see a lot of, more, a lot of youth after all. Uh, my impression about the retreat was I got closer to people. Um, I, got to know, I, got, I got to know God better and it brought me a, a better understanding of God and how, he, how important He is to our lives. What was the theme of this year's retreat? The main theme of this retreat was taken out of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. I will honor those who honor me. Um, this is a very important topic to me because it, teach, it taught not only me but the whole uh, youth at the retreat to honor the Lord in, all of our, in, in every way in our life. So with our parents, with our friends, uh, we were, we're supposed to honor you know, authority and to be obedient. These were also other topics that were taught to the to the youth about obedience in the church or obedience in our lives at school, in our homes, um, and to also respect authority and to honor uh, the authority that we have in our lives. And this is important because if we do not learn to honor the people that are in authority in our lives on a daily basis, we will never learn how to honor the Lord, which is uh, you know a, a very important part of our relationship with God. And it teaches us and, and, it, and it encourages us to, to take those teachings that we can apply in our everyday lives and to just know that by doing those things, those simple things, that we can also honor the Lord and also to, to know that by loving each other, loving one another, um, it, it is another way of honoring the Lord. There were um, a couple topics that were brought up um, also in a debate uh, for the older youth. They were given two topics to freely discuss what their aspects of the subjects were and what they, their opinions on them were. And those topics were sex before marriage and capital punishment. Um, Abuna gave a further inf uh, message about sex before marriage. And I thought that it was important for many of the youth, maybe not so much of the younger generation, but for the older generation especially as they are approaching maybe this part of their their life soon enough and to give them what it is that the Lord wants from us uh, you know in, in a marriage and what we are supposed to do when we are married for our spouses and how to honor them and to respect them which is another way of how we will we can honor the Lord and um, I thought that it was very 
very valuable to the youth, for the youth to know about these topics. So um, the idea is Christianity was one uh, was always practicing one practice beside preaching and songs. Mass was always the uh, the center of the worship of all Christianity. Now I know for the youths uh, that, that there are some struggles. If this is what Christianity was gathered around, isn't that a little bit boring? Doesn't that make Christianity a little bit boring? I want to tell you the mass have developed throughout throughout centuries in different ways to meet the needs of Christians at various times. Throughout history, we've been just repetitively, you know, mimicking others before us without uh, really trying to show the depth and the meaning of the Eucharist. Um, we, we have offended the Eucharist and the liturgy, the Mass, by not performing it in the same manner our forefathers have been doing. Yet, it has become a form. Uh, the idea of the Mass is a time to come and just do what Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me until I come. In other words, it's a remembering the death and the suffering of our Savior and His resurrection and remembering that He is coming again. We're always gathering around this mystery to give glory to God who so loved us because this is the greatest act of love God has revealed throughout all history. And every time we worship God, we worship Him on the basis of His sacrifice. And that's why the most important worship is to give praise to the Lord who came, became human and died for our sins. It includes several hymns that would reflect this. We hopefully one day will have a time to reflect on the songs and on the content of the, the Mass so that you would be able to enjoy it more. However, you should never say, I don't like the Mass, it's a bit boring or whatever. You have to force yourself and change your attitude towards the Mass and uh, try to understand and relate what is the point and take that time as a time of meditation, reflection on God's love and on your commitment to the Lord, on your love to the Lord. Uh, the language has become a burial for us throughout centuries. People spoke Syrian, Syria, which is Arabic. It is Jesus' spoken language. And we take so much pride in that. However, this has become also a stumbling block. Because uh, one, we are proud that Jesus spoke Aramaic and we sing in Aramaic. The message that Abuna had given in the retreat um, was very powerful and very uh, uplifting for all of the youth. Also, the uh, messages from Thamer to uh, encourage the youth to, to read the Bible more, to spend time with the Lord more, and to study it. Um, I think it, very, it was very um, encouraging for the youth to change their lives and to realize that our lives are to honor the Lord before everything else. Um, and I also, I mean, the youth at the retreat just seemed to be more in, in act, uh, in relationship with the Lord and wanted to connect more uh, as a result of these messages. And I thought that it was very um, different from other retreats compared to this one. What would the church expect from the youth parents in order to achieve its goal? While we all are responsible, parents have a special responsibility towards their kids. I have seen different levels of commitment that expresses the parents commitment at the same time in English we say like father like son it is very true and parents have always a great impact on the kids the way they show really real interest in God and uh, at the same time genuineness in their faith for example if I'm a dad and I'm showing or teaching my son to go to church and I never attend the mass or want him to listen to the Bible study I never read the Bible or uh, teach my kids not to swear and I swear before them. It's like uh, giving them medication in one hand and at the same time giving them poison in another hand. So parents have to be an example first of all, be a role model. 
at the same time parents have to put more emphasis and more uh, more uh, uh, they, they have to push the kids more towards coming to church at some point I noticed that the kid the parents say oh we've done our duty and that's it well maybe it's easier to deal with your kid as you know they still haven't reached the age of 17 18 but after that you kind of surrender and say well I told them enough and now they are to choose I don't believe that uh, this is the right thing because you hold before God you're held responsible for your kids you're held responsible to their raising and their faith the commitment faithfulness and don't forget we had a mature kids who were young adults they were adults they were not teenagers the kids of Eli the priests in the Old Testament in the days of Samuel we read about that in the beginning of the book of uh, Samuel the first book that God punished him and his kids to death because they really did not obey and the priest himself the father of those two young men did not uh, treat them harsh enough or did not force them into obedience and faith uh, in God so I disagree and I don't buy the idea oh I have to respect my child uh, choice and say well I told them and if they wish they can come that shows uh, disinterest and uh, a very little value on your behalf towards faith uh, it's exactly as if you're seeing cancer or a real damage or a real danger and jeopardy in the life of your kids you're not gonna say oh I told them and let them do what they want you're going to be more caring more forceful and I do believe that parents have to be to take the role fully since they are to give an account to how they've treated their kids and raised them in the day of judgment so I pray that parents will be congruent and uh, work with us hand by hand so that we can do something in the life of the kids.